Welcome to the Road to Inclusion podcast from the Atlas Alliance. My name is Gagan Shabra. I'm the project manager for inclusion at the Atlas Alliance, and I will be your host. And in this podcast series, we will cover themes such as disability rights, disability inclusion, the empowerment of persons with disabilities, inclusive international development aid, and disability inclusive humanitarian action. Welcome to the new episode of Road to Inclusion, the podcast from Atlas Alliance. And today I have a great, great, great pleasure to have with us mm. as a guest, Mr. Daginge Ulstein. He was the previous minister of international development in Norway. And now, right now, he's working as a uh, member of parliament mm -hmm. at the Norwegian parliament uh, in this pr uh, present uh, uh, state. And before we jump into this conversation with Dag Inge, up then we'll talk about the Global Disability Summit, how to make sure that international development aid is inclusive, what, what about the rights and inclusion of persons with disabilities in Norway and beyond. Hmm. Let me just quickly talk about myself. How do I look right now? My name is Gagan Chabra. I'm your host and I'm almost blind. And right now I'm wearing a black uh, uh, jacket with a black uh, jumper and a black shirt, which is buttoned up. And I have long curly hair. I have blue tinted glasses and there is, a, it's, it's the whole set is stage when it comes to in, in Oslo, in a studio and we have white background in the, in, for me. So, Dag Inge, uh, I hand it over to you. You can start introducing yourself and uh, give a little bit of description about uh, who you are, uh, uh, where, where you are from, and uh, how is this journey of being mm. the Minister of International Development and now, in the past, and now being the Member of Parliament in Norway. Please. Oh, thank you, Gagan. And, and first of all, thank you for inviting me in here. It, it's uh, been such a pleasure to, to get to know you, the work of Atlas uh, Alliance, and. And um, but I can start with I, I'm a bit boring dressed today. I, I'm just this very regular uh, suit that every single <laughs> almost every uh, male kind of politicians are wearing with a white uh, shirt. Um, but but again, it, it's it's so great to have this opportunity to talk about and to discuss the importance of, of uh, inclusion and, and the rights of people with disabilities. And and that is something that uh, kind of followed me. Um, um, my whole career uh, as a politician and also before because I, 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 we see it all around us. We see it mm. here, you know, where we see it and we, there is so many things we don't understand when it comes to, to, to uh, the, 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 the really struggle and, and the fight that so many people all around the world needs to, 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 to do every single day and, and mm. I think it's 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 uh, such an important uh, responsibility for politicians to 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 see that to to try to understand and and to do more. So uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of um, the start. I, I come from a bit up north in the, mm -hmm. the northwestern part of of Norway. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small small place uh, with a beautiful name. In Norwegian, it, it's uh, it's Sulevog. It's it's a, a bay of sun. Oh. So that's uh, it, it's um, in the middle of the fjords, the Norwegian fjords with the high mountains. Mm -hmm. And now these days there are snow in, in the top of those mountains. Mm -hmm. um, and and there I grew up uh, mm -hmm. with my family. And um, and now I have four kids. I'm married with uh, Ingjer, my wife. She's mm -hmm. a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been engaged uh, in politics for for quite some some years now. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, before that, I, I, I work with um, with um, uh, in a church um, mm -hmm. and also uh, as uh, as the development manager uh, at a hospital in in Bergen mm -hmm. um, or a diaconal kind of um, uh, institution mm -hmm. that, that work with, uh, in different areas. Mm -hmm. So that's my my background. Um, and now we're here in Oslo um, and. Um, some weeks has now gone from we where we had this transition with the new government in mm. Norway and and uh, and that's a good thing. Mm. I, I'm I'm I've been very privileged that have be, had this opportunity to to be part of uh, of the government and and uh, and now from a, a, a different angle uh, mm. in the parliament from um, uh, and I'm in the Christian Democratic Party. Um, 
And, and you know, I, I think this is what we're going to discuss today is one of the most important things for, for me and, and mm-hmm. for what I also really want to see more change in, in the months and, and years to come. Yes. And you started out mentioned the, the summit. <laughs> and yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, and even though I'm not in the government, I will really uh, try to follow that as close as I can. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely. You know, like it's it's an absolute pleasure because of a couple of reasons. First, you are an excellent, warm person to talk to. And also, uh, uh, and I say this because we met in Andal, mm. uh, Andal Suka, and wherein we were having this panel discussion about how to make sure that Norwegian uh, international development aid becomes more inclusive for persons with disabilities. And you were insightful, you were incisive, but you at the same time, you were warm. So mm. now we get a chance, all the listeners, to to see you in action, to, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to experience this insight side as well as the warmth as a, of a personality. So that's really, really good. So thank mm. you for uh, for doing this. And uh, if I may just take take two steps back. <clears throat> and um, here we are, we are talking about international development aid. Uh, today, for instance, just mm. a few hours ago, um, there was this incredibly important debate which happened, a discussion which happened by Nurad. Mm. And, and the topic of the discussion was about diversity and about making sure that or is in Norwegian international development aid inclusive enough or diverse enough? That's an important, important question. Mm-hmm. I still remember when I asked that question to uh, one of the panelists in, in mm-hmm. Andalsuka. And, and today there was a full-fledged debate on that. And there were panelists from other parts. Uh, uh, and all of them, they talked about racial inclusion, uh, racial diversity, gender diversity, gender inclusion, ethnic inclusion, socioeconomic cultural inclusion, mm. but they forgot about, again, persons with disabilities, which is like 1 billion people around the globe, yeah. almost 15% of the world's population. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so like, what are your thoughts about this? Where are persons with disabilities in this discourse? Because, and the reason I ask you that is, mm. because you were in the par not so long ago when it comes mm. to you were in that corridor mm. you were the decision maker you were mm. uh, liaisoning with the policy maker so mm. where are persons with disabilities in this mm. broader discourse internationally when i learned the numbers the first time and you said close to a billion um i remember over 800 million people living with disabilities in the, the countries that we are working in mm. in, in the global south and, mm. and that is such a high number it's mm. it, it, it's it's really devastating that we haven't kind of been able to engage in a much stronger way so when you say that that the, there's been an important meeting today almost without discussing that at all mm. it, it's uh, it, it, it's not good mm. um and that, that was why i i tried my best to 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 mention and to engage and mm. to use the names and to put it into the agenda mm. in almost every meeting that I, I, I attended. Mm. Um, and from the very beginning, the first months and the first year, I, I did it almost like an exercise for my own um, because I really wanted to to remember myself that put it in mm, mm, in mm. in uh, my my uh, in the text in the speeches and 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 others and to, to really try to make it as a uh, as natural as it should be mm. because we're not talking about special rights mm. I, I think we discussed this before it, it's it's the, the rights and and uh, and the needs uh, that we that, that everyone mm. have and 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 that's why I, I'm I'm so sad when I hear that they kind of put out one of the most important parts when we are talking and discussing uh, uh, inclusion. Uh, inclusion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, no, uh, th- this is this is really fascinating because in a way, if you think about diversity, mm. persons with disabilities are extremely diverse. Mm. Uh, you know, like the, you could be, uh, uh, doesn't matter your race, your gender, your sexual orientation, mm. uh, uh, your uh, socioeconomic background, your linguistic background. There, there's a chance that you you could have a disability, or you could engage. You would you might be knowing of someone in your family, in your uh, in your kith and kin network who has a disability. Or if you are unlucky in a way, then you end up having a disability out of injury, accidents, uh, and the rest, and fortune mm. and chance. So so one thing which boggles my mind quite genuinely is like when I was listening to the to the debate which was very fascinating had very important questions about decolonization about uh, about power imbalance about uh, about making sure that in the Norwegian aid sector becomes more inclusive mm. and diverse 
I missed this discussion. Mm. And you were the minister back in, if I remember correctly, in early 2019, you became the Minister of International Development. Mm. How, like, how was it back then, if I could jog your memory a little bit, mm. uh, and, and do you see some changes in the, mm. in the whole sector? It's interesting because in the beginning, I actually uh, heard a lot of, how could I say, bad voices that said, why are you so kind of uh, um, spending so much, if I could say so, in, 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 with special interests, mm. with some kind of special interest groups. And then they were talking about uh, um, alliances and organizations working with people with disabilities. But I mm. said, it's, it, we really have to do that. Yes. I should. I really hope that we could mainstream everything and that we have when we talk about education, when we talk about health, when we talk about climate, when we talk about gender. Mm. Then there was this kind of natural part of it that also had <laughs> inclusive enough for, for people with disabilities, but mm. that's not the case. Mm. So that's why I said we really need to to put a focus on this mm. uh, in a special way, mm. even though it's not kind of special <laughs> needs and, and, and things like that. So, so uh, yes, I'm, I'm kind of proud of that, mm. to, to, to listen to that um, interest groups and, and those alliances and those organizations. Um, and, and of course, we need to really work hard on how to, to integrate it into all the other areas. Mm. When we talk about education, mm. of course, the most, and, and, and the, the most difficult part should not be the last lap of, of our journey. It should be the first if we are to reach the, the sustainable development goals. So when we talk about inclusive education mm. and to reach all the young girls and boys with education, mm. uh, our kind of our, our reflex, uh, our kind of our, our, our way to, to, to meet that should mm. be to start with how could we in, uh, engage and, and reach out to, to children with disabilities. That should be our first lap, mm. not the last lap. Absolutely. So, so the, just one example, but, but uh, I think that is how we should work in other areas also. Mm -hmm. No, that's a, that's a fascinating example because uh, you mentioned some moments ago about that 800 million people with disabilities live in the global south. That's a mind boggling number. Yeah. That's a huge number. And also when you're talking about children I and mean, you're talking about education or, or 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 in future their livelihoods or healthcare we've got to talk about inclusivity because as i mentioned some moments ago like when it comes to disability it could happen to anybody you anybody could be impaired all of us as uh, as i have, have often said in some of the uh, opinion pieces we are all temporarily able-bodied individuals mm, so, well so 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 mm. Here we are, we, whilst we are talking on 10th November, uh, when it's getting recorded, everything is working fine for both of us. And, but we never, we never know, like there might be a mishap which might happen, but after, uh, after, the, after the Christmas, for me, like uh, I might go on skiing and I might slip down and I might uh, hurt, my, uh, hurt my spinal cord, for instance. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm, I have to use wheelchair, mm -hmm. for instance. And the same thing could happen to anybody, mm. anybody. So, I, so this thing which you're stressed wherein about special interest, that disability is not a special interest group. Disability is much more uni universalized yeah. phenomena and it affects everybody mm. in, in some way, shape or form. Mm. And, I, and, and the, the, my, my question to that would be that when you were in that domain of um, mm. leading the international development, were there some initiatives which you took wherein you centered disability inclusion. Mm. And what were those? You know, I, I think the first thing was actually to sit down and listen to those who have the most knowledge and skills around these themes. And that is people that live with disabilities, different mm. from poor. So, so I think that one of the first meetings actually was with Atlas Alliance and other organizations. And I really wanted to hear what is, from your opinion, what could the most important thing that we could do the next couple of years uh, actually be? And, and I think that um, there were some really brilliant people that came up with this idea. What if we work together? Hmm. What if we have like a consortium or see that we could join forces here? And, and from that, we now know that Together for Inclusion uh, came out uh, hmm. and, uh, and we see results and we see a really strong kind of driving force uh, from that consortium, from 
Um, and of course, Atlas Alliance is, is, is the most important kind of, um, how could I say, the starting point from, from that. But I, I would like to say that that is perhaps one of the most important thing that, that came up from the very beginning, the, the, the starting point. Mm. Um, and and, and the, one of the other things that um, I was told very early was that when you meet with the leaders of the World Bank, Mm -hmm. I remember I, I I visited them and it was Kristalina Georgieva that was the head of the World Bank and she wrote in New York Times the same month as I started and that was the first time I think that the head of the World Bank wrote about um, uh, inclusion of persons with disabilities and and we kind of that was a common ground that we we hit that time and we were some naughty colleagues that that met with her mm -hmm. and some others. Um, and um, and and from from for me, it was important to use the opportunities when I talked with leaders like her, when I met with World Food Program, when I met with large humanitarian organizations, mm. when I work with Education Cannot Wait or, or GPE or others that are in, much into education mm. uh, in apartheid countries to 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 stress that we really want to see uh, a much more stronger engagement and achievements when it comes to uh, inclusion children and persons with disabilities and 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 then I understood that we have a, a, um, a lot to say we can do a lot we are a large um, uh, donor in many of these organizations yes. we are in the boardrooms <laughs> and if we don't speak who would do that so Correct. so that was kind of my um, um, one of the other very clear messages that I got from uh, from the organizations that are are, are, are really hands-on uh, in, mm. in this so uh, and from that on, uh, that kind of developed a strong relationship with with uh, with with uh, a lot of you guys, and and also when we are um, we're out visiting some of our, our um, uh, some of the countries that we're working in, we really wanted to see, we really want to meet up with local um, organizations mm -hmm. uh, in this also. So I, I have so many good memories. Tevez Surdo. In Mozambique, just one yeah. example. Um, have you heard about that? No, please, please. Tevez Surdo in Mozambique. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if, if some of you that are working there are, are mm -hmm. listening or are watching this, but mm -hmm. but we have so much to learn from each other. Yes. Uh, it's so skilled per people that are working in, in with communication and, and, and uh, in, in that TV media company in, in Mozambique. Correct. It's just a really good example. I met with a really good group in, in Malawi and other parts that we'll never forget. I've mm. learned so much um, and we have so much to learn each other, I think, if we have the time to, to sit down <laughs> and listen and try to learn from each other. No, absolutely. Like, wow, this is there's so much to unpack in that answer. But the one thing which I like the most is that when you said that you were having this voice in the boardroom, it reminds me of this uh, this old saying, which states something like this, to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm. And in the case of Norway, Norway spends four billion dollars every year, which is 40 billion kroners mm. every year when it comes to international development aid which is phenomenal, which mm. is one of the highest per capita spending in the world. And when you said that you were centering the theme of disability, the theme of inclusion mm. uh, in, in the discussions, it's, it's I think, very, very mm. big step. And, and if, if I may just say this for the audience who might want to later on follow this, Together for Inclusion is a fantastic consortium. Uh, I, I must state this, that Dag Inge is trying to be, uh, uh, he, he, it's, it's, it's his brainchild in a way, uh, wherein he helped it come to life. Mm. So, and essentially what, ha what happened there is in 2019, DPOs, the Disabled People's Organizations, big ones from Norway, collaborated with big mainstream organizations like the Save the Children and said, can we come up with a model wherein there's inclusive education for children in most of the war-torn countries or very, very vulnerable countries like Niger, like South Sudan, like Ethiopia, like Mozambique, what you mentioned, Daginge. And that is a phenomenal thing which happened. So mm. how do you feel about it uh, mm. two, two years from now when, when this project started, mm. the TOFI uh, Together for Inclusion? You, you know, I'm actually most excited for what we are, what's ahead of us, because mm. I think that we, what we see now is just a start. Mm. I think that that is just such a good model for what we can 
see just uh, even more of. Uh, and I really hope that that could be a, a good model for, for others to, to copy. So, uh, so again, <laughs> we need to multiply that. Uh, because if you see uh, how little of the uh, fundings that are in a way earmarked or, or mm. uh, that we see reach out through, um, how could you say it, like uh, channels that, that are working with uh, um, people and children with disabilities. Mm -hmm. it's, it's such a small amount of money of that large kind of uh, uh, budget that you are mentioned. Uh, exactly. And that, yeah. No, if, if I may just interject, because I think this is a great point. Mm. Out of this $4 billion, mm. uh, less than 3%, according to Nurad's estimate, uh, goes to disability inclusion, disability mainstreaming, mm. which is, at its, on the face of it, very, very minuscule part. Because, as I mentioned in the beginning as well, 15% yeah. of the global population has some kind of a disability. Yeah. So. Yeah, like, but at least the start, there's a start. Yeah, there's a start, <laughs> and there's been results already. Yeah. And, 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 and not least, um, because we are in the midst of a pandemic, mm. and what we know is that uh, the most vulnerable ones are hit the hardest, mm. uh, and we still don't know the, the, the full effect. Uh, not only the health part of it, but, but actually the, the, the lockdowns, the restrictions, and, and also uh, some of the programs have been difficult to, to continue in the midst of this pandemic. So, so that is why it was so important to, to launch the, the Together for Inclusion work and to, to, to now to safeguard it and to let it grow. And, and uh, I'm, I'm really, um, uh, I've been so inspired when I see what, what that ha have, uh, what, what the results that we've seen already. So, um, so to be continued. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, one of the catch words in that, in that answer was safeguarding and letting it grow. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Like, uh, what, like now you are no longer the Minister of International Development. And I said, like, uh, Together for Inclusion was, uh, uh, you were instrumental mm. in making it come to life. Mm. There's, uh, and this is per perhaps most for the Norwegian audience, but, but there is a discussion now in the parliament uh, mm -hmm. with the new government putting up their budgets. And, and one of the things that concerned me uh, most after that was actually that they took away a lot of the earmarking that we, uh, that, that we tried to channel directed to, to the work uh, inclusion for people and, and children with disabilities. So, so, um, but, so, so there's kind of a fight going on now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it does not need to mean that they will take away that kind of money, but mm -hmm. in the long term, I'm I'm really concerned. So so that is why I really want to be a how say it, like a watchman or, or or to to be really close and to to fight with all I have to make sure that that not will happen. So um so um so that is how it is now. That was for the Norwegian audience, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it, I think this is very important because yeah. uh, what, like we have this concept of, for instance, allyship or those individuals mm. who could. Uh, raise the banner on your behalf mm. and support you in solidarity. Mm. Uh, and, and, and for instance, persons with disabilities, their movement, as I mentioned, it mm. need not be only exclusively for persons with disabilities because uh -huh. disability is part of human condition. Yeah. Like, quote unquote, death mm. is part of human condition. If you are lucky enough to live long enough, then there's a high chance that you might become disabled. Mm. So. So in that case, I think what you are doing, Daginge, being in the parliament, Norwegian parliament, and making sure that 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 this issue does not subside uh, when it comes to the inclusion or the rights of mm. persons with disabilities, and specifically those who are in the global south, mm. they are the m most vulnerable or most marginalized amongst all groups mm. in a way. So mm. yeah, but that's that's fantastic. But you know, there is so much that we need to 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 work on here here in Norway. Also, you know, I. I <sighs> From some of my previous jobs, we, we, we've been building new schools mm. and knowing that we need to build it in, in a specific way that mm. we make sure that we, we have an inclusive school. But still, we don't do that. Yes. We have uh, now a discussion going on. There's a human rights center in, in, in the city where I come from, mm -hmm. a human rights center. And, and you, you exclude a large part of the population because it's not possible to get in that house. Correct. Uh, so, and that's just two examples from an old building in a human rights center and a new school in the same city. 
So yeah. I, I think there is so much more to do, and that is something that I would really like to encourage uh, all the ones that are listening to mm. that. that Stand up, uh, ask the questions uh, to the people that are in uh, the government and uh, that are uh, leading in, in your community, because we need to, to, to see that change because it's, it's hitting all of us. Yeah. You know, the discussions about uh, nothing <laughs> about us without us. Yes. And you can turn wow. that totally different around because we are losing so much when we not have an in inclusive society. There mm -hmm. are so many brilliant people that have uh, so many barriers that makes it impossible for them to reach the tables that we are mm. sitting around. Mm. Mm. So that we will never hear their, their voice and to hear their very strong, committed, uh, 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 important voices when we really want to develop our society. So, so um, we don't know what's best for us. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Mm. Yeah, no, no, you're spot on with your analysis. Um, uh, just, just to put things into perspective, there's approximately 17 to 18 percent of Norwegian population which says they have some form of visible or invisible um, mm. uh, disability. Visible would be someone like me who is blind using a guide dog, or 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 or, uh, or someone who's on a wheelchair. Mm. Invisible would be someone who has a depression, mental health conditions, and the rest. Mm. And that's a huge chunk of Norwegian population. And when you said stand up for the rights, I was uh, I, a part of me was thinking about this uh, song from Bob Marley, uh, get up, stand up, stand mm. up for your rights, mm. get up, stand up, don't give up your fight. And mm. this is a fight which is a common fight mm. because disability is a part of human condition. Mm. Yeah. So in, in in this case, what you what you mentioned, mm. Dag Inge, that explaining to the audience that uh, that even in places like Norway, mm. Buildings are not universally designed. Mm. Uh, programs or, or places are not accessible mm. for people with disabilities to participate fully. Mm. This, is, this is such an important message. And so essentially this becomes a global phenomena. Yeah. And this, this is a perfect segue to talk about the, another thing, uh, which uh, again, you were instrumental uh, uh, to, to kickstart and to, and to uh, push forward the Global Disability Summit. Mm. So again, taking you back in those memory lanes mm. in the past, what are your thoughts about Global Disability Summit? What exactly it is, if you can tell mm. to the audience? We've had it once before in London. Um, and I, I think we saw a really strong commitment from the government, from uh, a lot of the actors that joined the, the, the last uh, Disability Summit there. Um, and there were a lot of good commitments mm -hmm. that were given there, um, even though we haven't seen them fulfilled, <laughs> uh, all of them. Yeah. Uh, so there was kind of a vacuum, mm. uh, some kind of a, um, and, and then you have the pandemic, a lot of things coming in mm -hmm. that also draw our attention in uh, other areas. Um, but but I really think that from the Norwegian side and from for me, it was important to somebody need to take that responsibility to make sure that we can continue what started mm. in London mm. um, and, and to take the next step to use that platform as a kind of a uh, launch pad for what we really want to see and mm. to make sure that commitments that were given there are will be fulfilled and that we could take new steps so it's kind of a, a stepping stone for 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 the next level um so we had the discussion with the, the last government and mm -hmm. uh, we were all in um and you know i think it's a good thing if we if it was not for the the pandemic we mm. will hopefully had that, that uh, the summit uh, uh, this year, or, mm. or um, now it's in February 22. Mm. Um, it will be uh, uh, um, partly digital uh, mm. because of the situation that we are in. So it's not optimal. There are so many, but we really want to see how we could use it in the best way, engaging um, everyone from everywhere mm. uh, and bring their voices to the table um, and and to see the next level, as I said, to take the next steps, because that's really important. And um, mm -hmm. it's about commitment. It's about funding. It's about uh, putting uh, uh, money and engagement to where the, 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 the mouth is for, for many of the leaders that are saying we will do that. And they, <laughs> they forget that the next uh, next month. So so I think the summit will be really, really important. 
Yeah, no, you're spot on. Like it's about walking the talk, yeah. right? Mm. Like uh, here, uh, London, 2018, the Global Disability Summit takes place for takes place for the first time. We come up with commitments with regards to inclusive education, inclusive livelihood, combating discrimination, and inclusive healthcare, and the rest. And th- three years down the line in 2021, we can look back at wh- how much of it kind of got realized and how much of it did not mm. get realized. Mm. And and in a way, this summit is kind of very pivotal, which I feel like because mm. here we are, uh, we just mentioned some moments ago talk that that even in a place like Norway uh there there are questions with regards to universal design or inaccessibility mm. of uh, or or lack of participation mm. or lack of voice or lack of representation mm. in Norway which is one of the richest countries in the world which in 2019 was called as the best place in the world with a, a number one on the human development index mm. here we are we, mm. we 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 face similar challenges so in a way it's so essential so pivotal that this message kind of gets heard mm. uh from mm. norway to the globe mm in a way yes so mm. it, 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 do you have some thoughts about that what i said yeah you, you know i think first of all it, it, there are so many lost opportunities mm. <laughs> in this as we uh, just discussed uh and, and so that's what we really want to 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 shift what we really want to see is a change and mm. from the more kind of um egoistic egoistic side of it mm-hmm. uh, my the, the dream and the hope for for the summit is that everyone in Norway we are a small country so there is not that many people living here but but i really want all the children and everyone to know that there is a global disability summit we really want to learn from that we really want to engage uh in that in the schools in the kindergarten mm. and and with uh, companies and others um and and i really hope we could do that uh to 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 work with the media with with others to to make that a, a, a huge happening for the norwegian community that we can learn a lot from it um everyone because that's that's an opportunity that we really don't want to miss and and of course the other part is to 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 engage with other voices with with people from all around the globe as i said mm. um and um when it will now be as i said uh, in in a digital platform and mm-hmm. that's also gives us some opportunities um and um and now i'm not in in the front seat of how we should take the last <laughs> kind of um uh, steps uh, yeah steps uh, of, of the concrete uh, summit but mm-hmm. but i really hope that we will see strong commitments from from different regions um and that it will not only be like an event but it will be a, a continuum of what happened in london and 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 what we can see uh coming out of it also so so um so but i'm uh, excited uh, <laughs> and um so but there is so many really uh, dedicated and 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 uh, and uh, and skilled people working on it now so so i'm um, this will be a, a really great event yeah no like uh, you have set the ball rolling uh, in the past couple of years when it comes to uh, the global disability summit and now it's all about uh, making sure that it uh, it reaches to the fruition uh, mm. and and the results come out and and uh, and just so that all the audience who is listening and watching it later mm. uh, would be w- w- should know that this summit will take place digitally what you mentioned dagenge mm. it will be from 14th to 17th of february in 2022 on the first day there will be a summit with, which will entail perspectives from the youth so there'll be youth day youth summit the second day will be uh, the one for for civil society forum and and the third and the fourth day which is 16th and 17th of february the uh, th- that'll be with the, all the high level meetings and uh, and and people coming up with commitments and making sure that those which have not been fulfilled kind of there's a the the duty bearers the governments mm-hmm. the feed is put to the fire you know gagan one of the last thing i i did when i was in in, in the government yeah. was actually to to write as many invitation letters that i <laughs> was able to and just send around and call people and meet up with people and say you need to come to oslo you need to engage you need to be on that platform that day yeah. uh, so um so i hope they said yes <laughs> <laughs> no, I, i keep my fingers crossed and i hope that they are able to travel mm. uh, uh because uh, uh, we were supposed to have uh, uh, a few guests 
guests, uh, international guests who could not make it mm. uh, next week um, because of uh, um, the travel restrictions and the COVID situation, which is mm. always evolving, always changing mm. uh, in a way. So, so again, I keep my fingers crossed that that yeah. all those guests could come in person. You know, oh, that's because, good. Uh, because then we could have a little bit of a hybrid kind of a summit with a few people here and then the rest of the globe uh, engaging with us. Mm. Uh, if uh, because you know you you mentioned about uh, this in the uh, while talking about the G- global disability summit mm. that there were some commitments that were being made mm. and some kind of were not fulfilled and uh, so essentially there was not few did not lead to good outcomes mm. are there f- any commitments which you think hmm. you would want to realize hmm. through through the upcoming say global disability summit mm. You know that there are so many bad reasons uh, for not kind of uh, do the the, the 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 pledges that came in London. There are so many, uh, and of course there are some that we could say is is, is partially good reasons. There mm. are many needs. The pandemic hit. We need to 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 shift around. But the needs for people with disabilities in the global south has not going the right way the last uh, months and last year. So so again, I, th- I think we really just need to put that in place. Uh, so, um, but but there are, we could start a lot of new projects, but, but mm. uh, I, I really think that one of the most important things and what could create the, the most change is mm-hmm. if we could um, put the, the, the full understanding of how we could do this in the other kind of sectors where we already have a lot of, of money, where the big money are, the large organizations, yes. through the large educational programs, through the health programs. When we, we're talking about uh, primary health care, when we talk about universal health coverage, hmm. Um, hmm. we need to have the right skills and the knowledge around how to put inclusion as the heart, center, and core of, of that work. And we could go all the, round, uh, the way around when we talk about climate action, adaptation, uh, when we talk about job creation, when we talk about youth, mm. uh, so important to to not have that as a, a small chapter on the side, mm. but actually as the core and center, as I said. Um, so, um, so, so that's a, 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 an important part. But of course, um, to strengthen the capacity of civil society. Yeah. Um, when I say that, for, for many, it seems like, okay, that sounds like a small kind of piece on the side. But no, mm-hmm. no, no, no. We need to strengthen that muscle. Yes. Uh, and what we learned from the pandemic is that is the most important part of what we do, because there was a lot of uh, organizations and other things that, that broke down and left. But mm. the partner organizations, the local uh, NGOs, the civil society organization, they, 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 they they live there. Exactly. They know everything mm. what's going on mm. 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 every day, 24-7. Absolutely. Uh, so, so that is, if there is, I have some regrets, is that we should have done more of that earlier mm. because we just see in, in, in the middle of a crisis how important that is. So, so, um, so, so together with that kind of uh, uh, see more work with inclusion and, and work with people with disabilities in the large programs, we mm. really need to to, to, um, to strengthen civil society uh, organizations uh, <laughs> in this. I think that's uh, that's so important. Oh, you, you're hitting the nail on its head. Uh, in, in my assessment as well, I feel that you are spot on, mm. that often for us, we are we are in Norway, we are in Oslo, we take universal healthcare, for instance, for granted. And uh, and that's not the reality in the global south. Mm. We, we we are talking about countries wherein there is scramble for uh, for making sure that 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 people are able to have life have sufficient livelihood, people are able to live a decent life, mm. and often persons with disabilities are literally forgotten mm. in this whole debate, in this whole discussion. And it's we are here in Norway. We have our big organizations disabled people's organizations mm. in Norway, Save the Children in Norway, in based out of London, and we are doing activities. But those who are on the ground are those who are ones who know the reality, the context, the situation most intimately, mm. most uh, um, comprehensively. 
And mm-hmm. if we could help them, not only through quote unquote transfer of aid, but more through transfer of knowledge, yeah. expertise, peer to peer learning. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a fantastic point, Daginge, uh, that 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 in the beginning of this that there were these people who had this project in Mozambique. Yeah, Tevisurdo. Tevisurdo. Yeah. And and you when you engage with them, you're like, wow, I'm learning something from them. Yeah. So had to have that kind of open mindedness mm. that it's not like a north south transfer of knowledge lived perspectives uh, uh expertise and uh wealth or money but it's also that you go there and you learn from them you're like wow this mm. makes us also enriched mm. it gives us also perspectives yeah mm. you know my first thought when i met them was we really want to connect them with this large media group in Norway we need <laughs> we need to exchange we need to learn we need to learn so uh so kudos to to everyone that working in tv sorta you, you should <laughs> yeah uh so so just a good example but but you have so many good uh, points there uh, gagan uh, that's uh, that's for sure Yeah sure. you know, because because I'm kind of kind of trying to paraphrase your understanding with regards to when you said that when you listen to uh individuals organizations uh then you learn from them and then you can take action which is more informed more uh contextually sensitive mm. and mm. this is such an important thing to uh to to reiterate because we don't want to be individuals or organizations who say that we we kind of know what's best for you no we've got to engage with them in a way that Here we are. We are here to listen to you and let's find solutions together. Can can I give you an example? Yes, please. You know, from my previous work um was the uh, is the deputy mayor or the commissioner for finance innovation and property hmm. uh in in the second largest city and and we were working on um uh, our new kind of the websites of the community mm-hmm. uh, the, the city. And I remember that one of the the most important, uh, for not to say the most important um, uh, colleague that I, I got in this, uh, to actually create how everyone in our city should engage with uh, their computer, with mm. their MacBook or what they have, mm. uh, the uh, what you say the the, the interface or the um, uh, how to have universal access mm-hmm. uh, in the ICT programs. That was uh, Eva, Eve. Okay. And she moved in together with her dog Quissy. And now you understand. She was the head of that program. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of my colleagues they think, can you put a blind one to actually draw and build how we should see <laughs> what's going on on the screen? Yeah. And you know that was the best thing. Yes. And and, and she is still working in in uh in Bergen and and again it's just what such an important lesson for me and for mm. all my colleagues mm. um and, and and that creates the best kind of product for mm. everyone so for everyone yeah. so it's um it, it's just such a good example uh, and uh, she's one of, of, of my, still one of my favorite colleagues <laughs> so uh, if if you're listening it's uh, we really need people like you that that just show the rest of the world what this is all about No, absolutely. Shout out to you from my end as well, uh, uh, because I think that uh, you, you're spot on. You, you mentioned some m- moments ago about barriers which people with disabilities mm-hmm. encounter. So one mm-hmm. thing is for me, dogging it to give you a book and say, here is a book which talks about attitudinal barriers such as ableism mm-hmm. and environmental barriers such as access. inaccessibility of mm-hmm. environments, you know, or accessibility challenges. And read the book and try to understand what it means. and there is another scenario where i say to you dagenge here is an individual hmm. who has lived through these barriers hmm. on a, who literally lives through it on a daily day to day basis hmm. and and finds ways to circumnavigate it hmm. and you can have a coffee you can engage with him or her yes. and the next thing you know is perhaps you might learn quicker a more in depth insights from the individual as compared to that book Yeah. There was so much to learn, mm. and there was a, a total new understanding of what is universal access about. Mm. And, and and as you said, we just need to know each other, know our, each other's stories, and, and and to learn from that. It's it's uh, so uh, nothing. about us without us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely representation matters and nothing yeah. about us without us making sure that, that most of the diverse perspectives are on the on, on the table. Uh like yeah, so we talked uh, about the Global Disability Summit and now I would like to um uh, to take 
you like two steps away from that mm -hmm. and uh, because you have been in quite uh, um, strongly engaged with uh, interacted with listen to learn from uh, the the quote unquote disabled community in Norway mm -hmm. and you're engaged with us the Atlas Alliance what what would your message be to us like the Atlas Alliance their members their partners mm -hmm. in the global south how could we build a strong disability rights movement and how could we use this global disability summit as a springboard to build that movement mm -hmm. and I ask for our rights yeah you, you know I, I, I think that um... Well, the, the engagement uh, and, and what we talked about as the starting point of our relationship uh, in the beginning of this podcast is, is a really good example to, to, um, to invite yourself to to some of the the it, it could be local parties it could be other organizations it could be people that you know are very much engaged it could be people and organizations that you think should be very much more engaged uh, in 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 this yes. area uh, to to be very open and to to invite yourself to sit down and and intervene and to talk and to share your stories and and not least share the results of your engagement and, and, and the work that uh, organizations like the, the Atlas Alliance organizations are, are, are doing, the impact mm -hmm. of the work. Because I think to, to make sure that we have the um, the commitment from governments and politicians, they mm -hmm. really they, they won't like to see results. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I know that you have so many good results. And at the same time, we should talk about the risks. This is not an easy job. Mm -hmm. This is difficult. Mm -hmm. But we have committed to reach the Sustainable Development Goals before 2030. Mm -hmm. And there will be no chance <laughs> to do that yeah. if not engaging with uh, those kind of organizations. So it's... it's um, uh, again, it's uh, some huge opportunities for leaders and they need to see that opportunity. Absolutely. Like a great piece of advice, invite yourself mm. to different kind of forum mm. at the local level, at the city level, at the national level, at the regional level, at the transnational level mm. and, to, and to explain your stories and communicate it in a way which is quite, uh, uh, quite insightful, which is personable which which people could relate to and uh, and what i found uh, through 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 you and your experience is that mm. yeah that you have been receptive because often people want to invite themselves people with disabilities mm. but then they are told that this is a forum on diversity what yeah. has persons with disabilities to do with diversity mm. Mm. and then the door gets closed mm. so a part of it has to do also with mm. the fact that that those who are in power mm. should also be like yourself receptive enough mm. to engage with uh, with with those who are in the quote unquote vulnerable groups because what you said Dagen, is absolutely spot on if we want to r achieve sustainable development goals mm. the targets by 2030 and if we want to practice what we preach leave mm. no one behind mm. we cannot exclude Marginalize and or forget persons with disabilities. Mm. That's that, that's so important. Mm. Uh, but, but if yeah. I could say, uh, so, Gagan, one advice is, yeah. and what I've seen being really powerful here in Norway mm. is when we see organizations, small and medium sized, and, and together with others that are large, when mm. they come together, mm -hmm. when they kind of invite themselves together mm. as uh, like this consortium, uh, or it could be two or three organizations together, uh, and that could often create a, a, a stronger force yeah. that is more difficult to say no to. Uh, <laughs> so, so that is kind of a, a good starting point. See, are there others around us here? Could we try to, to reach out together? Could we in, invite ourselves? Could we write this letter? Could mm. we do something together? Mm. Um, that is always a good good thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Invite yeah. yourself and engage in collaborative action yeah. and, and make sure it's grassroots. And then you could uh, hopefully bring sustainable and inclusive change, mm. which will be which will last longer. Uh, like now, now we, are to, we are reaching the end. So uh, a little bit of quick questions from uh, from my side. Third December is the International Day for Persons with Disabilities. Mm. You know, this has been going on for 40 years now. 1981, uh, it started. That was the International Year for Persons with Disabilities. Mm. Uh, so. 
how you, you belong to Christian Democrat uh, uh, Party. Mm. How do you, as an individual, Dagen Geulstein, and you, as a member of the parliament, mm. uh, and and as a, from Christian Democratic Party, uh, would want to engage with us? How do you see mm. a solidarity movement taking place on the theme of disability I- inclusion on that specific day? Mm. You have some thoughts? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. I I, I will not forget that because it's the day before my birthday, so that's <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, that's great. It's easy, but but it's. Great time. it's I think it's uh, the hard work. It's about all the other days, not the special days. Mm, mm. So there's a lot of important meetings now before uh, that day. And but but it will be more important this year than others because of the summit. I think mm. because we really need to kind of set the stage and 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 building up the momentum uh, for the Global Disability Summit. So I, I really hope that we could frame that day leading up to what's going, what's coming in, in February. Uh, so I hope we could use that day, as I said, to, to wake the Norwegian kind of uh, <laughs> society, schools and others to, to say, um, hello, people, there is something coming up. Uh, and, and this is an important day, but it's not only a day we need to see more work done on mm. this the next year mm. we have this going on in february uh, join us um and as i said to be continued mm. <laughs> exactly so build a build a broad coalition have a bigger tent mm. and and focus on moving away from commitments to outcomes yeah focusing. because you know there are special days every day yes they are you have a un day for a, B, C, D, E, E, exactly. everything. So it's, it's, this is not a, a, a one of those days. Yes. <laughs> we need to create something else. Uh, and I think that's why I'm really happy that we have the, 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 the summit here in, in Oslo uh, in February. And, and we, I, I really hope we can see the bridge um, between those uh, events. No, I really hope that that uh, event kind of strengthens the uh, uh, the, the realization of uh, goals or outcomes for the summit, the Global Disability mm. Summit, which will take place in February 2022. And mm. absolutely, as you said, a bridge yeah. uh, and a bridge which uh, invites everybody uh, and engages with as broad a uh, uh, set of people as possible. Mm. That's great. One last thing. Apparently, you uh, you are a, a musician, and, <laughs> uh, and and I would like to take your advice on. Um, on Have you Google uh, now on music. or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like so. So, uh, any piece of advice for music for for me and the fellow listeners uh, 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 in in November twenty twenty one? It can get really dark and gloomy in Oslo, Norway, mm. in that in that month. Um, you know, uh, I would like to say Electric City. That's perhaps one of the the, the bands that you've, uh, you yeah. you should listen to. <laughs> um, you know, I listen to to very broad kind of scene of of music. Mm. Uh, but in in um, I think I would like to say um, put on some Coldplay. Coldplay. Yeah. Have you heard about uh, you? You are my universe. <laughs> that's good. I that, think that's, that's good. a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> that, yeah. that, that, that's a good thing because uh, the, the moment you said Coldplay in my head, it was like fix you, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 I don't want. <laughs> I, I, I want a little bit more pe- uh, uh, pe- uh, yeah, yeah, pe- yeah. pep music uh, yeah, for, yeah. for the month of November <laughs> uh, in, in Oslo, Norway. Uh, 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 and this was such an honor and privilege to interact and engage with you. Uh, thank you, Dagenge, for t- to take time out. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, that one of the reasons why uh, we were excited to have Dagenge with us is not because of his insightful, incisive uh, um, input, but also because of the warmth of the personality. Thank you so much, Dagenge. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you so much. Thank Dagenge. you. Thank My you. Privilege. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope that you found this conversation insightful, engaging, enlightening, and a little bit entertaining. I hope you get a chance to follow the next episodes.